out there and all you uh, and all you uh, trolls and haters how are you doing hope you're all right it's Russell here aka Big Porky straight into action with the Dennis Hobson show last night in Sheffield he offered me tickets the day before out of the blue and I didn't go uh, I did go out though but uh, not, I didn't stop out long I had some business to take care of regarding the channel and I came home and I watched it uh, and uh, it was sad to see it's very hard for me to give an opinion you know, if, obviously I have had a relationship with Dennis as mates, a working relationship and a friendship as well and you know, I, I'm going to have to say it as I see it, uh, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell it, but just be honest, what I saw, now I'm going to go straight into action, matchmaker with Carl Greenwood, now people can say, oh yeah you're going to pick holes in it because you don't work with him no more, I'm going to tell the truth, same as I'll tell the truth about Yui when he fights in Bulgaria, same as I'm going to tell the truth about this. So, that's just how I, how I am. No doubt Dennis will pull me when I see him in Bulgaria, but this is how I, this is how I look at it. I'm going to go straight in with the first fight. Sufyan Ahmed, Asian kid making his debut. Right, and he won on points against Antonio Harvatic. Now this wasn't on the TV, and he's ranked 1,555 out of 1,978. He's 10, 52 and 0. So he's got a losing record. Now that's that's the first that's the first fight that we're on. Uh, the second f fight that we're on was Keenan Wainwright. I've heard a lot of good things about Keenan. He's a Glen Rhodes fighter. Glen trains, manages, and promotes him. Although he didn't promote him last night, he didn't promote him last night. Denny Sobson promoted him, but. Uh, well, I'm just going to be honest, they didn't look like there was anybody there, did they really? That's the truth, Dennis will know that. They can hide all that with lighting, can't they? But that's the bottom line. Uh, a promoter's job is to promote. Now, Dennis was a great promoter, but you can only promote what you're working with. So he's got four kids here on the debut. Look, this is black and white, this is what I deal in, look. One, two, throw four kids on a debut. He's got this first guy here. 
He's from Croatia. Croatia. He's lost Andy Harris. Three sixty-three and one. He's never knocked anybody out, so he's got an up percent KO ratio. One thousand nine hundred and seventy-eight. He's ranked on box rank out of one thousand nine hundred and seventy-eight. There you go. There you go, that's where we're looking. For all you casuals who've started clinging on to my channel, this is it. Yeah, that's where you look under. 1,978. He probably earns more money than Rising Stars because he's got a job, Andy. And he's busy all the time. And we got iced last night. We got bashed about by Keenan Wainwright, who was a big puncher. Now... He's never stopped anybody, Andy Harris, and he's the lowest ranked lightweight in world boxing, and he's 36 years of age. Now, and his name's Andrew Thunder Harris. Now, he's got a good old peak on his biceps there, hasn't he? But that's just a message out there to all you people who think if you've got big biceps, you can knock people out. Well, he's got big biceps, hasn't he, for a nine stone nine man. But look, he's never stopped anybody. He's only won three. He's been stopped 13 times. He's got distance 50 times and he's had a draw. Now, the three he beat, uh, two of them were not much cop, but one of them were Robbie Barrett. Robbie Barrett will now be embarrassed about that because he went on to win a British title. That shows you how piss weak boxing is at the moment in certain divisions. Piss weak. But the boxers that deserve, they deserve respect has been in with Tom Stoker. We didn't really do much. Martin Joseph Ward. He's a good fighter. Luke Campbell's a good fighter. Robbie Barrett's a good fighter. British champion, he can fight. Uh, Maxi Hughes, a good fighter, has been in with him. Isaac Lowe, been in with him. Isaac Dogbo, been in with him. Lee Glover's decent. Paul Island Jr., O'Hara Davis. Uh, Michael Rooney, Mickey O'Rourke, good fighters. Cassius Connor, decent fighter. Uh, he had a winning record then, Cassius. He's a good fighter, Cassius. Uh, Alex Rutter's not bad. Uh, Lee Appleyard's good. Dean Evans. Uh, is that the right Dean Evans? I think there's more than one Dean Evans, isn't there? Uh, so he's a great Craig Poxton. You know, he's had a good grounding. And he's one of them that gets a living. He's always busy. Look, he's got two fights booked already. He's just been beat last night. And he's booked up twice in November. Now, because he got stopped last night, uh, he can't fight for a month, but that one's 17th for November, so they probably knew we were going to get a stop last night because Keno Wainwright, Wainwright carries bricks in his hand. But getting back to the show, enough about Andy Harris. He is what he is, and he's a journeyman, he's the lowest ranked lightweight. In world boxing. Now, Kane Salvin, he made his debut against Saki Shirzad, who had a losing record, and uh, he's from Afghanistan. And uh, he lost on points, uh, but Kane Salvin won, so well done to Kane. Look forward to seeing you. And then a fight that's uh, a bit upsetting for me, to be honest. Because if you look at the beginning of this video, you'll see me uh, with Hakim Nasser, the day he signed for Dennis. Uh, Obviously, that was my first ever interview with a camera. <laughs> uh, I bought it because I said, Dennis, we need to get our fighters some exposure. So I bought all the equipment, paid the downloading 
fee for the year, which is about 144 quid, I think. Then I bought all the equipment and that. Uh, I thought I'll buy it because then if you go your own way, you can take your camera, can't you? And Akeem lost uh, against Brett Fido, 11.48 and 5, so he'll be devastated. If you look on my first ever interview with Hakeem Nasser, uh, he's a nice kid. They all go to college, they're all good kids, they've all had a good grounding by the dad. They're very well respected and very well brought up kids. But boxing is the most unforgiving sport in the world. Now, if you don't work out for the Nasser brothers in boxing, it'll at least taught them discipline. And they've got the school in and uh, to fall back on, aren't they? So the dad's plans, they've got a plan A and the plan B, so that's good by the dad what he's done for them. Uh, but I'm devastated that Akeem lost because he's a nice guy and uh, it bothered me all night, to be honest. But uh, boxing, as I've just said, it's the most unforgiving sport in the world and I feel for them, for the NASA brothers and I feel for Ryan Rhodes as well who was a big hero of mine uh, and he was my favourite fighter Ryan Rhodes until Carl Froch came along uh, anyway I wish the NASA, NASA ask you, Akeem NASA all the best and his dad Arif he's a nice guy but on to Michael Gomez Jr uh, he uh, did used to fight for Frank Warren. Uh, I heard a little story that they went storming down there over his purse money. Michael Gomez, were his dad, Michael Gomez Senior, were raging. They went all the way down to Hertfordshire, causing a load of bollocks. And too right if your son's not getting paid. Of course you're going to stick up for your son, aren't you? But he won last night, Michael Gomez in style, against Ronaldo Kajina. 14, 51 and 5, he had a losing record as well. Uh, so well done to Michael Gomez, he's 8 and 0, he's learning his trade. On to Dan West, Dennis's uh, super welterweight guy, light middleweight should I say. He uh, he won last night against Dale Arrowsmith, 217 and 1. So well done to uh, Dan West. And then onto the televised stuff that was on last night. Uh, Lua Nasser. Uh, he w he lost last night. He got knocked out against Nasibu Ramad Han, who had a winning record, 25-12 and 2. In my opinion, and I'm not saying this because I didn't match the fight or put any lists together on this, so there's no sour grapes. Let's remember that I was with Dennis 38 month, I never took a pound note off him. Not a pound note. I spent thousands of pounds of my own money. Uh, just in expenses. Bouncing about with Dennis all that time. I never took a penny. I can assure you that other people around Dennis took money, but I didn't. Lua Nasser got beat last night. He got stopped. No way in this world but I have put Lua Nasser in with that kid last night, no way in this world, the kid with a southpaw uh, Lua got beat by Brad Watson, he got stopped, he was 10-0 before that fight he got stopped by Brad Watson out on his feet in a barnstormer certainly one of the fights of of the uh, of the year in my opinion uh, Brad Watson against Lua Nasa. He, he's just been in another barnstorm with Lou, but I never had him winning a round. I don't know what Richard Towers were looking at when he had him ahead after after six rounds. He had him ahead. I don't know what fight you were watching. BoxingScene.com and nobody who I know in boxing who watched it had Lua Nasa ahead. Nobody had him winning a round. I certainly didn't give him a round. Could have given him a share of one round, but he didn't win a round clearly for me. He never held centre at ring. Uh, kept spitting his gum shield out. He never followed his instructions from his trainer. So, back to drawing board for Lua, but two bad knockouts in a year. 
I don't know what they're going to say. Probably going to say he's fighting at wrong weight. But if he'd have won last night, nobody would have mentioned the weight. But, in my opinion, he's got to go back to the drawing board. He's only a young kid. But he needs to stay with his trainer. Too many people sack the trainers, in my opinion. Stay with Ryan Rhodes. And listen to Ryan more. Ryan's been there, seen it, done it. Right, we're gutted for Lua last night. We're gutted for full family. Uh, but what's he, what's he doing in with a southpaw? I don't know. I don't know, but... Uh, that's boxing for you, isn't it? That's... Uh, that's just how it goes. Uh, but what can I say? I feel for him. But if you go through, if you look at after Andy Harris, you look at Shahid, he's 1,388 out of 1,496. Now that that's the guy who Kane Salvin beat. Then ha Hakeem Nasser lost to lost to Brett Fidu. Brett's ranked 271 against 1240. Now my argument is this: the matchmaker has put all them other kids in with guys ranked well over 1000, and then they put Hakeem Nasser in with a guy ranked 271. Now how's that slip through the net? How? Yeah, they want a puncher, but the kid can do the rounds, can he? He's been stopped once in 48 fights. That is a hard, hard fight for a kid on his debut, fighting a guy ranked 271. Now, somebody's to blame for that, whether it's Dennis or Carl Greenwood, I don't know, but someone is to blame for that. You don't put kids on the debut in with somebody ranked 271. Because, as I've just said to you, Ahmed, the kid at the bottoms, fought a kid on his debut ranked 1555. And then you go to the second kid, Keenan Wainwright, who's who's controlled by Glenn Rhodes. He's in with a guy on his debut ranked 1978, the worst guy in the world of boxing at, at lightweight. The worst. And then you go to the third one, 1388. Out of 1496, so the third debut guy, these are all matched correctly. Maybe, maybe the two, are, maybe them put, maybe the matching is too poor for the first three. Too poor matching. Maybe you should go for somebody ranked about six or seven hundred. They have these rankings for a reason. That's why they call it the Bible of boxing. Then you get to Hakim Nasser, and as I've just said to you, there you go. There you go. 271 is ranked. 271. Hey. Okay. And look at NASA. He's making his debut and he's ranked 1066. And he's fighting a guy ranked 271. And you're telling me that's good matchmaking, Dennis. I don't think so. Uh, then you've got Michael Gomez. He's in his ninth fight ninth fight and he's fighting a guy ranked 1168 so somebody has agreed to Hakeem Nasser's fight his debut against a guy ranked so high when you've got a kid fighting his ninth fight against a guy ranked 1168 then you've got Dan West he won against a guy in his 10th fight, ranked 1,098. And then you've got Lua Nasser, he's fighting a guy, ranked 98, and he got beat. Now, Lua Nasser, he's ranked 298, so it was a big step up for Lua, wasn't it? Maybe too big, after he's just had a bad knockout earlier on this year. He had to be rebuilt. Has he been rushed? Only his team will know. Somebody's at fault. I'm not having to go at anybody. Because they can't put bad fights on TV. But is it a combination of everything? 
I don't know but I'm just explaining to you the simple things of matchmaking where you can be overmatched or undermatched the first three year they were mismatches in my opinion I know kids are on the debut but come on and then you've got this one here he were, he were hard matched Hakim Nasser Hakim were hard matched Michael Gomez that were a bit of a mismatch for him and Dan West's a bit of a mismatch Lou and Asser were in an hard fight there he should have had somebody around his ranking to fight and then you've got Tommy Frank in his ninth fight against a guy 189 now Tommy Frank he's ranked about 105 in here or 110 or something let me have a look he's ranked 112 Tommy now as far as I'm concerned Tommy Frank's a stylist, isn't he? He's got all the skills and all the moves. He's got the skills to pay the bills. People are saying Tommy Frank ain't got no power. Now, Tommy Frank, he's had just had eight. He's just had his ninth fight. Ninth fight. He's 25 year old, and he'll be getting his man strength soon. But he's got all the skills, and he's learning his craft, isn't he? That power will come. But Tommy, like I said, he's had nine fights and he's had 48 rounds. Josh would have won a title after 44 rounds. So Tommy's learning on the job, isn't he? Learning on the job. Uh, where, where's uh, his phone with that? Oh, this phone here. Uh, But, but, but bottom line is, uh, hang on two seconds, I'm going to send this kid a message. Let me just finish filming and I'll call you bunny. Two secs. Now, bottom line is this, right? Boxing is not to be played at, it's a team sport. Too many people think they can do everything on their own in boxing, it's a team sport. Now Dennis's show last night, it weren't a sellout. Now who's going to pay to watch this? Who's going to pay forty quid, thirty quid, wherever it were to watch that? Now they're not, they're not going to either. The tickets that were sold were probably fighters' tickets. What they sold, but I can see what he's trying to do here. Four kids on the debut here, starting fresh again, starting fresh, a new start for him, and I could see. We how, how, how they were trying to talk it up on Punditry with Richard Towers, but which brings me to Richard Towers. Uh, Richard Towers were talking last night about Brendan Ingle and who he'd sparred too much for my liking. I don't I don't know if that's because it was his debut or the fact that uh, that. Uh, he were tongue tied or nervous or what, or what, I don't know, but this is how I look at it. When you're on TV, first things first, you've got to be smart dressed, haven't you? The woman who was the presenter who were talking to Richard, she wasn't smartly dressed, was she? Right? In my opinion, she weren't smart. Richard had a bomber jacket on, right? And stubble. That's not smart, is it? I thought he spoke competently he spoke clearly don't forget he's a novice at this game and he said you've got to give him a chance he spoke competently and very clearly and he does understand boxing because uh, he's been a fighter hasn't he? he was a 15 and 1 fighter uh, every way but uh, it, you don't need to talk about who you've sparred um, we don't need to hear impressions of, 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 Bre of Brendan Ingle, who, who were a great trainer, but people, they're not there to, they're not there to listen to that. Uh, people are there to listen to the fight about, want to hear about the fighters. We want to hear about upcoming shows, what's next for Dennis Hobson Promotions, what's next for free sports, when's the next show, and who's on it? Because uh, we've just had a super flyway, heading. Uh, headline in the show and I thought he boxed superbly he won every round it was a shutout for Tommy Frank well done uh, 
Lua Nasser in an exciting fight. They're the good things to take from the show. Obviously, I didn't see the other fights. We've only got the, the results in. But, uh, you can pick holes in it all, all you want. And other people can pick holes in every show, can't we? We can all be critical. It's... You know, there's people can be critical, but they should try and put the money into the show. People keep saying uh, that Dominic Ingle's not happy with this or not happy with that, how boxing works and this and that. Well, Dominic Ingle should go put some shows on, shouldn't he? It's all right, very, it's all very well taking fighters who were already world champions and getting fighters off other people who were British champions, but go and put shows on and have a go at it yourself. It's very, very hard. Now, Dennis would have done his conkers on this show last night, I can assure you. Nobody made a bean on that show last night. Nobody made a bean, so we can't be too critical. The pluses from the show. Tommy Frank won. And he's learning his craft, he's now 9-0. Michael Gomez won. He's learning his craft, he's 9-0. Tommy's more advanced than Michael Gomez, I know that for a fact. Dan West had a win. He's now got a winning record. Uh, but technically he's a journeyman. Lua Nasser, he's got to go back to the drawing board. Hakeem Nasser needs to be matched correctly with a guy ranked over a thousand. He needs five or six of them now to get over this. And the other three kids won on the debut, so it's all good, isn't it? Do you know, it's all very good. Uh for the bottom three that is and the other two so you could say technically you could give the show a 5 out of 10 couldn't you and a 5 out of 10 for production but then you throw in the crowd and how many tickets are sold are people doing the jobs right is Dennis doing his job right promoting them or do fighters have to get out and promote themselves not every fighter can be like Ricky Atten selling loads of tickets can they it's an hard hard game out there but that's boxing in it for you so but anyway uh, I wish Dennis all the best and his matchmaker or whoever matched him do you know I don't know why they have a matchmaker in boxing me to be honest because you know a matchmaker when he makes a list up and he goes to Dennis with list Dennis will just say yeah or nay so why don't they just let the promoters match I think it's just an excuse to take £168 a year off off a matchmaker to be a matchmaker to say I'm a matchmaker because the promoter's always going to sign off on all fights isn't he but I'm pleased that Keenan Sufjan and Kane won on their debuts I'm gutter for Asim I'm pleased to Michael Gomez and Tommy Frank and Dan West winning and I'm gutter for Lou Anassa and that's boxing isn't it so anyway Peace out, keep on trucking, and thank you too. Let me see if I can remember them all. All these people helping me. Jesus. In fact, I'm not even going to mention them. You all know they are to help me, don't you? But, uh thank you very much. And, big shout out to Marnus, Charmwood Kitchens, and Will at Colourwork, Colourworks in Leicester. Shout out to you chaps and uh, keep on supporting boxing. I'm now going to do something I should have done the other day. My pound for pound top 15 list because Dale Nichols, shout out to him, been on at me all day today about my list. So I'm going to put my pound for pound list out now. So all the best to all you boxing fans. Keep supporting boxing and keep on supporting Porky's Corner. Because big things are planned. People might say, ah, you're full of shit, Porky, you're full of shit. I'm not full of shit, I can assure you. But shout out to Terry, thank you for sending me that book. It should be in the next couple of days, all being well. I'm looking forward to reading it, Terry. But anyway, thank you very much, and peace out. I'll leave you with a picture of the pig, of the pig, the pig, while well, I try to figure out which one of these three phones I'm going to keep. <laughs> what amazes me is 
boxing. It amazes me. 